This is part two based on a true story of Jesse the Jackhammer. And like I said, I was getting my gear on when I heard this. And this is actually between the uh, the wrestlers and that promoter for Thunder Mountain Wrestling. And they took over the show. They got Valentine's, Danny Valentine's kicked out of the ring. I lied said it was his, their ring. And I actually, it was his ring, his show. And they got him picked out. So they took over. Um, but anyways... Um, so I went out for my match. It was, it was, I had a, it was supposed to be a tag team. Well, I went to tag in my partner, and he decided to go out and sit in the crowd. So, anyways, I went. The other guys started coming at me, and so um, then he tagged in his partner and started being a triple. Trip, uh, no, a triple threat match, uh, handicap match. So, anyways, my partner and the guy I was wrestling was out to paint patty cakes, and I went to jump through the ropes and hit the guy's wrestling, and his partner, his partner grabbed me, his partner grabbed me, uh, excuse me, his partner grabbed me, and, um, Pulled me down real hard on the mat. He started stopping the crap out of me. Um. So I start. I, I just got mad. I mean, because I what I heard, and I just walked out. Said, "Hey, I quit. I quit." I was rolling through the thing, and I pulled my my protection off of my elbows, and I started throwing it in the crowd. I said, "I quit. I'm gone." So the guy pulled me out and started stomping me. He he was stop he was stomping me. He came up behind me and really got me in this crotty hole, ninja hole, what it was. And he um, he really did a number. He did a number. He um, he really uh, my neck popped and I felt the pain this time. When my neck popped. So I was out again, based on that, and I found out they stole Diddy Valentine's ring, but that was part of the thing, that's what they, that's what I heard they wanted, that's what they had set up and everything. So, um, this is, I don't know, I mean, it's, it's horrible, it's horrible how it's done. It's horrible how things go on. It's horrible how wrestling is in life. And the basic thing is, I left there, and actually I met some other promoters at the show that night, and they and it was the the company I met was called XMCW. Well, they wanted me to come to their show and, and wrestle. Um, so I did. I went to their show, but they wouldn't let me wrestle. So, and they promised me they had a spot on the show. They didn't let me wrestle. So, there was another little organization that ran their ring. And they had a little shows in the back of the, of the ring that invited people on the Sundays only. Only Sundays. Uh, it was, and so, I went to that one. And I actually wrestled in that one. Um, anyways... It's crazy how things go because, you know, after I'd done that, my wife was pregnant and she called me and I was out, I was gone for six years. I was doing this for six years straight, straight six years. Um, I was traveling around a lot in West Virginia, everywhere. I've even been to Paducah, Kentucky, um, but I, my wife called me one day, she was having problems with her pregnancy. And so, anyways, she called me. I was ready. I had a match coming up. I was like the third, fourth spot, and I was working. Getting ready to go in shortly, and she's having difficult with the pregnancy. And she says, she called because Jesse. I said, yeah, Sharon. I said, what's wrong? She goes, I'm having problems. I'm going. I need. To go, I'm going to go to the hospital. I said, okay. I'll talk to. The, I'll go talk to my boss, and tell him that I want to leave. I can't do it. Well, this is like six years ago. 
and I went to him and I was like, hey, um, <clears throat> my wife's pregnant, remember? He goes, yeah, I remember that. I said, she's having problems. She's going to the hospital. Well, the guy says, that's not my problem. <clears throat> I said, <clears throat> well, I need to leave. My wife's having problems. He goes, you know what? You're not leaving. You get a match. You got to keep your match, and you're going to wrestle, or you won't have a job. So I was like, you know. And he goes, I already paid you, and you're going to wrestle for me. I said, you know what? I said, here's your stinky money. Stick it up your ass, and keep your damn job because I don't need it. I walked out. I left. Six years ago. Now, I do want to say this. I've been through a lot of promoters. And there's some good promoters out there. Denny Valentine's was the best, best out of the best promoters I ever had. Uh, John, Matt, Eric, Sam. I've been through a lot of promoters. I'm not going to go through no more names. I've done it for six years. I've traveled all over West Virginia. I've traveled to Paducah, Kentucky. Let me tell you people something. You watch wrestling on TV. They come to your town. That What you see in, in your town, they tape. But they go to another town. They tape the other parts. They, and they put it all together. Make one full t length of a time of a show from... The time it comes on, say, uh, Raw comes on at 9 to 11. They have to travel, they travel to town to town and put links on there. They do that. It's not what you really see in your town. And behind closed curtains, you don't know what happens behind closed curtains. Yeah, it's true. If you people weren't there, wrestling wouldn't be here today. If you people didn't buy a ticket, they wouldn't get paid. But see, your trust, your ability, and I know, and I'm telling you from my own professional that I know personally. You all people out there in the world, in the cyber world today, that votes for these wrestlers in WWE, and your thoughts, and your love, your care for these wrestlers when they get hurt. Let me tell you something. The reason and why does these wrestlers get wrestlers get hurt is because the boss man says you're gonna put on a hundred percent for me, you're gonna do this, or you're not going to have a job. I know I was there. I was told the same thing. Behind closed curtains that you don't see. They have to snort cocaine up their nose. So when they go out to the ring, they don't feel a thing when they get hurt. But when it wears off, they feel it. And they know. See, these this wrestling is supposed to be for the kids. It's, they're supposed to be, we're supposed to be big role models. Yes, we are. But see, I've done drugs in the past. But I got into wrestling to get off drugs. Okay? But, see, the thing is, I left wrestling. I got into something I loved. I left it based on, based on, it was taking everything away from my family. My four-year-old, my four-year-old four didn't even know me at all. She didn't know who I was. I went there. It's like Ric Flair said. You can't make up for lost time, but you can be there for them and do what do with them now. But you can't make up for lost time, like what Rich Flair says. But the concept is here, when they're behind closed curtains, they take up cocaine. Okay, here's an example. Shawn Michaels, he comes out. He works several shows. In several weeks, several months, se out of the whole year. You know how he looks so tired, just like this, when he comes out to the ring, it's like that. 
Well, Shawn Michaels has a big bag of dope up his nose. Because 